May the 4th be with you, happy Star Wars Day, and of course being Star Wars Day, there's some new Star Wars content to talk about, the first episode of The Bad Batch is now streaming on Disney+, Plus, and I felt like we should talk some Star Wars on this beautiful day, so without any further ado, let's discuss the premiere of The Bad Batch. <laughs> Clone Force 99 find themselves in a changing galaxy after the Clone Wars as they bear witness firsthand to the execution of Order 66. But before I dive down into my review, let me know what you thought of the premiere episode of The Bad Batch, if you're enjoying it, if you're very excited to see the rest of the show, and who's your favorite member of The Bad Batch, tell me all of that in the comments below, start the conversation, and just be aware there will be spoilers in this review. This will not be a deep analysis of the episode, but I want to talk freely about the events of this premiere, and if you're new to the channel, consider clicking the subscribe button, it does wonders to get my content out there, and you'll be aware of any time I upload some new Star Wars content, or just great geeky content in general. The Bad Batch was a show I was not too enthusiastic about, but this premiere episode was really fun, especially in its first half there's this somber tone to it as Clone Force 99 sees this major cataclysmic event happening around them and they don't really know what's going on, so during that first half it's very much them trying to understand what is happening not only around them but to their brothers the rest of the clones the rags as they call it and one of my favorite parts of the first scene is that they come in to help this padawan and his jedi master and suddenly order 66 is called for and the clones executed and the bad batch goes after this padawan to try to save him because they just helped him but he doesn't trust them, he just assumes they are as defective as all the other clones, and turns out this Padawan is Kanan Jarrus himself. It took me a while to realize, because I just think of Kanan as Kanan, I don't even remember his original name of Caleb Dune, but here he is. And I really like that connection that we see, it goes against some of the comics, some of the books, but you know... The movies and TV shows take priority, so I'm kind of all good with that, or at least I've grown accustomed to that being the case. But it's a really good element of the show that it immediately connects us to the grander lore of Star Wars and the events and how Order 66 affected the galaxy and Admiral Tarkin back in Kamino is now testing the clones to see if any of them are defective, are degenerates, are just not good to be used for the Empire. There's this grand communication from Palpatine himself on an hologram they immediately took the audio from Revenge of the Sith as Palpatine was announcing the Galactic Empire is now overtaking the Republic and becoming this new thing. And I really like, again, those connections that we see as it is happening in sequence. It's happening at the same time as Order 66 is taking over. And one of the things the show does really well from the beginning, and it also did it in their mini arc in the final season of Clone Wars, is that these are very much not regular clones and they are very different from each other in personality. Hunter is very different from Wrecker, who's very different from Crosshair, who's very different from Tech, who's very different from Echo. And Hunter and Crosshair take the center stage in this hour-long episode, 75-minute episode to be exact, because Crosshair wants to follow orders. The chip didn't really work on him, but there's a part of him that does say that they should follow the orders that they are being given. The chip in Crosshair is not quite as damaged or ineffective as it is in the other members of the Bad Batch, but we really get to see their personality shine and we get to see their dynamics, but of course mostly between Hunter, who I like to call Rambo because look at him, and Crosshair, of course. And after a great training sequence that, again, shows us great character dynamics, how all of these people work together, and we get to see them work in combat, what their thought process is like, they are sent on a mission to kill some insurgents by Tarkin, who they think are going to be just separate destroys, but once they get to the location they need to be at, they find this group of people, just 
people, civilians, who are being led from Saw Gerrera. Again, through Saw Gerrera, which is really cool to just see him, we get that connection to the Clone Wars episodes that we've seen and that happened prior to these events, and then to the future in Rogue One, as well as Jedi Fallen Order, the video game. And so the episode comes to this point where it actually explores the individual decisions of the Bad Batch as people, as characters, but also the moral compromise that they find themselves at. They are soldiers, they were bred for this, but what do they personally think? What does their critical thinking have in mind for them? And the friction in there continues between Crosshair and Hunter, and it's growing and growing and growing, and as soon as they get back to Kamino, they're ambushed and they are sent into a cell with this little kid that they had met earlier called Omega. I thought this kid from the trailers was going to annoy the crap out of me. But she is actually a pretty cool character so far. She's resourceful, she's smart, and she's hiding something. Something that I don't think she even knows about it. She's the assistant to one of the Kaminoan doctors, and she is a clone herself. And I believe... This is actually the first female clone we're seeing, and she did try to warn Hunter and the others before they went into that location where they found Sogarera about not coming back to Kamino. It's not safe, and it was a test from Admiral Tarkin all along. And since Tarkin was spying on them, he takes Crosshair and enhances the effect of the chip in his brain making him just another clone and pushing him toward the Galactic Empire. And so the episode comes to this standstill where it's a great shootout sequence as the Bad Batch is trying to leave with Omega, but Crosshair is now on the side of the Empire and tries to take him out. And so I really like that this episode gives us great character interactions, it establishes who these people are as a group, but more importantly as individuals, it also lays the groundwork in general for the story that we're going to follow. Now we not only have an outer conflict where these guys are just trying to stay alive and trying to understand what is going on, what is changing, why is it changing, what do we have to know about these changes, what could put us in danger, but also now they have the internal conflict that they have to get their brother back. And the episode ends with this very interesting interaction with the Kaminoan Prime Minister and one of the doctors to whom Omega was an assistant to and they don't trust the Empire either and there's something they're hiding I believe about Omega that she doesn't even know about. So I was really surprised by the first episode of The Bad Batch. It features some really cool connections to the grander Star Wars universe. It also has this kind of somber tone and feel to it. And it features a lot of mature storytelling that I was not expecting. And all these characters are at least likable. I'm starting to root for them. I'm interested to see where they go from now on and I think turning one and I think turning one of them to the dark side really elevates the personal stakes for our main characters. So all around I was pretty impressed and I really had a good time with this. I don't think it's great. I'm not ready to say I love this show but I am invested now and I'm curious to see what they do next. So those are my thoughts on the premiere episode of The Bad Batch, The Aftermath. Let me know what you guys think, throw it in the comments below, start the conversation. And again, if you've watched this far, but you still haven't subscribed, consider clicking it. Again, it does wonders to get my content out there. And if you guys want to see more Bad Batch covered in this channel, let me know in the comments as well, please. Thank you so much for watching, you are the best. Stay tuned for more reviews, whether it is Star Wars or not. I hope to see you in those. And so until the next one, May the Force be with you, always.